All right, hello. Today I have a fossil to share with you. This is a Growlithor trace fossil. It's a dinosaur footprint. Uh, this is a cast of a footprint that's found actually out in western Colorado. It's from the Chinle Formation uh, out in uh, Mesa County. Um, so this was deposited or left behind in rocks that were from the Triassic, so 210 million years ago. And I said before, it's a Growlithor type fossil. Growlithor means stilt walker. Uh, so if you're uh, wondering kind of what that name came from. Now trace fossils are really cool because they provide us evidence about life in the past uh, that our body fossils cannot tell us. So body fossils are all of the hard parts. Bones, teeth, exoskeletons fit into body their body fossils. Um, Ichnofossils, trace fossils, uh, tell us about uh, other behaviors of life at the time. So they include footprints, they include burrows, um, and uh, little types of trackways that uh, creatures might leave behind. Uh, so they're pretty interesting. Now what's cool about this Growlithor type fossil, trace fossil, I told you it is a dinosaur. Uh, so we can see it has three toes. So this is a small theropod dinosaur. We don't know exactly who made it, so the Growlithor name just defines this group of trace fossils. Um, so they were first identified in 1858 uh, by Edward Hitchcock, who was a geologist uh, living in Massachusetts. Uh, he actually worked at Amherst College. Um, and so he identified these three toed dinosaur foot tracks again in uh, New e the New England part of the United States, so Northeast. Um, so they're found from the early Triassic to the early Cretaceous, uh, 250 to 100 million years um, ago. Um, and again, they are these three toed footprints and they range in size anywhere from 10 to 20 centimeters in length from the, the back of the foot to the front toe. So uh, what's cool, they do have these three digits, uh, but when we go and look at dinosaurs that were alive during the time when these tracks were put down, um, the dinosaurs had four to five digits. So what we're seeing here is digit uh, two, digit three, and digit four. And the first digit and the fifth digit would have been reduced in size, so kind of stubby and held up off the ground and not left behind in this foot track. Um, so if you're wondering what type of dinosaur left this behind, again, we can't say exactly who did it because the small theropods, their feet all look kind of similar, um, but it would likely have been something like a celiophysis uh, for ideas, an idea. So how in the world do trace fossils form? Well, we have to have soft sediment. Um, think about squishy mud uh, that's starting to dry out. So it's moist, but not soaking wet, so that when you walk across it, it leaves behind your footprints. So I have some Play-Doh to make a nice trace fossil. Uh, we can spread that out. And I have a little dinosaur friend. Um, and so this dinosaur could be walking by, and as it steps into the mud, it sinks down, and it leaves behind these little footprints. Now over time, the footprints are on a long horizontal plane, and if you're trying to think about environments, this would be forming along um, a place where you have a lot of moist, fine grain sediments. So flood plains along riverbanks, uh, potentially if you have any silts in an estuary kind of getting close to the oceans. So some sort of wet, fine grain environment uh, where the sediment gets wet and then it dries out over time. So it's on a big plane. The footprints have been left behind um, and they can be exposed. It'll take days to weeks for this material to dry out and then we'll bury it under more sediment. And at that point, if we bury it enough, fossilization can occur. Um, so the footprints themselves, these leave behind a mold um, and they do get filled in. So we have our mold here. If I wanted to show you a fill in, I can press this down onto the fossil. And I'm gonna create a cast, whoops, it kind of turned out. We create a cast of our footprint. So we can see again, those three toes uh, left behind. So this could be the sediment that filled in on the top and it was buried. And then later, uh, weathering, uplift, we erode away part of the tops. And then these trackways become exposed uh, for geologists and everyday people to walk, come up and, and discover them. So they're pretty cool. Now, why in the world would we care so much about these trace fossils? What is it that footprints can tell us? 
I've already said that we can't figure out exactly who made it, um, but we can look at the patterns and we can see some similarities to figure out which gr likely group of dinosaurs made it. So we can start to kind of get down uh, into some of the groups. We might figure out if it's a sauropod or if it's a hadrosaur or a ceratopsian, kind of leaving this print. We can usually figure out if it's a theropod, but we do have to be a little bit careful because some of the groups, their footprints look pretty similar. So theropods and ornithopods can look similar um, and it, we just have to look more specifically to see uh, what the overall character looks like to maybe figure out which group it left it left it behind. But again, we can't figure out specific species uh, because again, it's a footprint. My footprint might look like, you know, they all look fairly similar. So uh, trackways themselves do provide glimpses in, in time. So they are a big plane um, and they record footprints and tracks uh, from anybody that came across it. Um, so that tells us a little bit about behaviors, uh, social behaviors, um, ecology of the area, um, social structure that we can't figure out by looking at a dinosaur's bones. Uh, so what does that mean? You have a big wet plain, we see these footprints, and we can start to make observations about the footprints. What size are they? Does it look like it's made by one individual, or are there many individuals? Are they moving together? Are they going in the same direction? And are there different sizes of the same type of fossil, uh, same type of track? So that tells us about that social structure. Because of trace fossils, we've learned a, a quite a bit. One, this is a three-toed fossil. It looks a lot like a bird track today. So we can look at these homologies between birds and dinosaurs as one option. Uh, we can figure out running speed. So if I have a pair of these, I can measure out their distances and I can start to calculate out the speed at which the dinosaur was moving based on the tracks that it left behind. If there's a big group that's all moving in one direction, we can figure out that they were moving as a herd, especially if they include smaller individuals and bigger individuals moving as a big family group. Um, and again, even thinking about patterns of migration, where were they going? Why were they going? Um, and there have been some mega trackways where these this herding behavior is uh, inferred, uh, and then we see tracks left behind by you know, one or more theropods that would suggest that we have prey moving along, being followed by some predators. So again, this is really cool information uh, about the lives and lifestyles of our dinosaurs that we can't pick up from our, our bones alone. So I hope you found that a fun look uh, at one little trace fossil, little dinosaur footprint. Um, and anyway, I wish you all a wonderful day and happy learning.